Happy Friday and welcome to Great Day Washington. I'm Ellen Bryan. Kristen Brissett Harris, she's on assignment, so we'll see her on Monday. But for you on our show today, we have the top travel trends for 2020, along with some last minute holiday food, gift ideas, and a performance from an artist that we love so much who is right here in D.C. But first, of course, here in D.C., it has been a very busy week in politics. We've had the impeachment vote. Last night, we had the remaining Democratic presidential contenders that took the stage. Some of them did for their final debate in 2019. And so to recap all of this with a very entertaining look, we have entertaining political roundup. Instagram star, political blogger, Q with the Q, Quentin Giles, is joining us all the way from Texas. Yes, thank yes. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Man, it is big right now in D.C., yeah. everything that's going on. Yeah. First, let's start with the debate last night. Okay. Who did you think won and who lost? You know, I thought Amy Klobuchar had a stellar performance, mm -hmm. um, and she hasn't gotten a lot of traction, but she was so clear in defending her policies, whether you agree with them or not, she was clear in defending them. She was clear in defending herself. She was clear in counter punching uh, other political rivals. And she had some really funny moments, which was different because she's kind of stiff sometimes. So yeah, she had some yeah. really funny moments. So I thought Amy Klobuchar did a, an amazing job. There was a lot of laughter from all of the candidates last it, night. There right? was. There was a lot of laughter. Bernie Sanders yeah. had some moments. Joe Biden right. had some moments. Andrew Yang had a really good moment at the end of it. But for me, Amy stuck out so much because most people have kind of tuned her out because they deemed her mm -hmm. boring. Mm -hmm. And so for her to come out with the punches and the laughter, I just thought it was a breakout moment. And you don't think it hurt her to do that? No, absolutely okay. not. I think it showed personality because we already know you have the, po uh, the, the policies. But sometimes people want to feel fun with you. Like, I always say that people voted for George Bush because we thought we could have a beer with him. Mm -hmm. And so Amy right. Klobuchar gives us that feel as of last night. So one of the questions that really stuck out to me last night was the one where they said, would you give a gift to one of the other candidates on yeah. stage or would you ask for forgiveness for yeah. something? Mm -hmm. What did you think of that question and how the candidates responded? I was surprised that that was a question to begin okay. with okay. and I think it threw a lot of people off. I yeah. thought it was very um, jarring that all the men on the stage wanted to give a gift. Um, yes. Yeah, they wanted yes. to give a gift, right? And so Andrew Yang wanted to give his book. And then Pete Buttigieg was like, well, I'll give my book too. And then Bernie was like, well, I have a book too. So it's <laughs> yeah. like everybody's pushing yeah. book sales. Right. But the two women on the stage actually asked for forgiveness. You know, we actually have Elizabeth Warren's answer. Okay. Can we, let's play it real oh, fast. Good. Hear what she said on forgiveness. Um, I will ask for forgiveness. I know that sometimes um, I get really worked up. <laughs> And sometimes I get a little hot. I don't really mean to. What happens is when right. you're in the What did you think? You know, I had a uh, double mind on this. On the one hand, I understood exactly what she meant, and I felt what she was saying, that she is not trying to come off abrasive or offensive, but she believes mm -hmm. what she says. And so I, I took that apology. But on the other hand, I don't think that she has to ask for forgiveness. We do not ask men to forgive them when they are strong, when they believe what they say. And we shouldn't ask her to do the same thing. She is an amazing candidate. She is a strong woman. She has thought these policies out. And so, no, you don't have to ask for forgiveness, sis. We already like you. Right. I, I just felt like no guy, none of the male candidates would stand no. on stage and be like, I'm sorry that sometimes I'm Absolutely a little aggressive. Not. Absolutely not. A and we wouldn't yeah. demand it of them. And we right. might even look like, why are you asking for forgiveness? But for the women to do that, I think it is reflective of our, of our society that in that moment, not that she had to, but that's where she went. Mm -hmm. Because I think that was just a cultural and societal norm for women to do that. But I reject that. Elizabeth and Amy Klobuchar, stand in your power. We love it. We accept you. And I'm here for it. So something that's really going to impact the debates and the campaign trail going forward is the impeachment because we yeah. have some senators who are running for president who will now be pulled back for yeah. the trial yeah. in the Senate. What yeah. do you think that's going to do for the campaign trail, especially as I was just 45 days out? You know, I think it might hurt them a little bit because they're not going to be able to be on the ground and talk to those uh, people in Iowa. They're going to have to be in the Senate. And so what we saw with the impeachment, a lot of people watched it, but nobody's watching day to day, all day, unless you're me, and just love this stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And so with them being off of the trail and over there, there's only going to be a select type of people watching that. And so it might not be Iowans. Um, and so I think it might hurt them in a sense, unless they can get some sound bites, some good 
punching moments that'll play in the news cycle afterwards. That's right. They're going to have to make sound bites. They are. Through that trial. Yeah. What do you think? Does this hurt President Trump, the impeachment mm -hmm. uh, going into his campaign for yeah. 2020? I think uh, it does hurt him. I think it does hurt him because we'll always look at him as an impeached president. Whether you support him or not, you will always have that stain on your record. And so it hurts him in the grand scheme of things because the Congress has rebuked him in some type of way and said that these actions, again, whether you agree with them or not, we will not stand for in Congress. And so it hurts him on the grand scale of things, but I do think it ignites his base um, because mm. that's the, he's their guy. So they don't want to see their guy in trouble and, and we wouldn't want to see our candidate in trouble, right? And so I think it, it, it hurts, but it helps a little bit. Yeah. What do you think when we're sitting here in a year, in 2020, December, what's happened? I mean, what does next year look like in your mind? Next year looks kind of chaotic. If we're talking December, that means we've already had the election, yeah, right? That's true. <laughs> okay. That's true. So it looks a little chaotic because on one hand, if the Democrat wins, I can see Trump throwing a complete fit. Um, and typically when we have a new president come in, you know, the first uh, ladies come out, the presidents come out, we all wave, we get photo ops, and then they fly off into the abyss and go on about their business and we have a new president. I just don't see that happening with Trump if he loses. I really see a lot of chaos and a lot of confusion, um, and I don't think he'll go willingly. On the flip side, if he wins, I see a lot of chaos <laughs> because I think Either the Democrats way. are going to be completely upset. They just impeached yeah. him. And so they're saying that he is a danger to the country. So if he wins another term, that's an existential threat to them. Quentin, thank you so much. We'll see. We're going to have to have you back yeah, in a year yeah, to say. Absolutely. All right. This is everything that happened in the last year. Thank you so much. Follow him online for his latest political commentary, and we'll be right back.